to order and like to welcome everyone. If we could have a roll call, please. Chairman Maturo? Here. Linda Schwartz? Robert Bornstein? Here. Steve Lohan? Robert Lombardo? Here. Don Colapetro? Here. Jeff Lewin? Here. Thank you. Any public comments? Seeing that there's none, we'll continue. We have a, uh, Deb, you want to read this or you want me to read it? I read it. Presentation by Dr. Margaret Banyan of Florida Gulf Coast University regarding the commencement of the required evaluation and appraisal review process of the city's comprehension plan. Welcome, Doctor. Doc, can you hear me? Hmm. Okay. Oh, we'll, we'll take care of that. I was going to start doing sign language. It works, it works man. Listening to the conversation back then. Doctor, oh, we there apologize. We go. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you so much for your patience. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Now, may I share my screen or is that going to. Yes, I, by all I, means. Okay, I can. <laughs> all right, I can share my screen. So, uh, I, all I would like to say here is I hope this is the most exciting thing uh, that you experience today technology problems. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what I want to do this morning is just give you a short presentation and uh, just kind of walk you through the ear process and then open it up to questions that you may have uh, about <clears throat> the process as well as get your feedback on what you're seeing. So are you seeing my presentation okay right now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, I yes, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Uh, so uh, this is just an overview of the evaluation and appraisal review process. So I'll refer to it as the EAR, uh, and that's how it's known pretty much throughout the state. So first, uh, you may have already met our team in the room. Uh, so our, our team is myself, uh, and I'm a professor at Florida Gulf Coast University and Carmen Monroy, who is with Stantec. Uh, and Carmen is a, uh, also a proud graduate of the uh, MPA program at uh, Florida Gulf Coast, as well as Erica Makagi, who is a current graduate student at FGCU. So I can't see them, but if you haven't uh, waved your hands, Carmen and Erica, uh, go ahead and maybe just do that right now. Uh, you'll see uh, these folks throughout the process uh, just a, a note as well with Stantec, there's other people that will be working on the, um, the project, uh, but more or less behind the scenes. So you may see some other folks, but that's the, this is the main team that we have. So just in terms of the ear process, so uh, you may have already been through this before. Uh, you did get a copy of the last document that we produced. Uh, so this is a Florida state required process every seven years. Uh, so the last time we did this uh, EAR, uh, we delivered it. It was due in 2016. Uh, and so uh, this time it'll be due again seven years later. Uh, and uh, there's an official process at the state level, uh, and it's the evaluation and appraisal review of the comprehensive plan. So there's, there's three kind of main goals with the ear. <laughs> and so the, the main goals is really looking at your comprehensive plan to determine any deficiencies and necessary updates. Uh, so uh, as seven years pass, you know, the, the comp plan, things change. Uh, sometimes the um, conditions change on the ground. So we want to look at that and look to see if there's anything necessary to update. And then uh, in terms of this, uh, how well the elements have performed, what we look at to see is, has anything in the city changed? Uh, has any goals in the city changed? And are the elements of the comprehensive plan still serving the city's goals? And then the last piece is the really more or less the state required piece uh, to uh, look at uh, the state statute uh, determine if there's changes in state statute 
that must be reflected in your comprehensive plan. So those are the three kind of main buckets that we look at the uh, comprehensive plan uh, through or lenses. Uh, so I just want to be clear at, at this that this process, the ear process, does not change the comprehensive plan. So there are no changes that will be proposed in the ear process. Uh, there may be recommendations for later changes, but there's nothing here that is going to change the comprehensive plan uh, it, through this process. Uh, so this process will be due to the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity uh, April 1, 2023. So you'll see in the timeline uh, in the um, work that we've kind of framed things in stages. And uh, I'll talk a little bit more uh, about that general timeline in a, in a little bit. So uh, again, ear components, uh, state required changes in uh, or changes in state legislation. Uh, so you'll see uh, an assessment of, of those changes. And again, you have an example from the previous year. Uh, we also look at current conditions. So we'll be doing an update to your demographics uh, as well as a vacant land analysis. Uh, we look at trends analysis. Uh, we go to the, the agencies to see what has changed at the agencies uh, that you work with most closely. And then we do a plan review. And so that plan review piece is strategies for addressing any issues. Uh, and, and again, that's the piece where we would look at what are the goals of the city and is the plan still meeting those goals. Uh, so the, the ear engagement, we have kind of three, three big buckets of, of engagement and public engagement. And, and the first is council. So with council, we often do one-on-one -on -one meetings. In fact, we've done uh, one series of one-on-one -on -one meetings already. Uh, we'll do uh, con continuous council presentations at key points uh, with yourself, the LPA, uh, will provide briefings and the LPA does review the EAR document uh, when we get closer. And then with public engagement, we will continue to do in-person and virtual public meetings. So the first one is going to be on June 7th. Uh, and uh, with that, because we have a virtual com and in-person component, uh, we'll, we're able to uh, involve folks that are across the country. Uh, and so that's one advantage uh, that we have at this time. We'll do uh, several more meetings as we go through the process. Uh, and uh, the first one really will be framed more generally about what is the public looking for. And then the following meetings will be geared around things that we're finding. <clears throat> and then we also will do a, a broad community survey. And that community survey uh, will look somewhat similar to what we did several years ago. Uh, and at the same time, it will be updated with any current questions that we um, or you um, may think are important to ask the public. So I want to talk just a little bit briefly about who we see as the key stakeholders. Uh, so uh, everyone inside the agency and, and outside the agencies and inside the city, uh, we consider stakeholders because uh, it's important to be able to understand uh, what the comp plan is is serving for all of these different uh, kind of groupings or stakeholders. So citizens, of course, are one key stakeholder. Uh, council is one key stakeholder. The LPA is another. And then the city staff and Benita agencies. Uh, so uh, we're really framing the engagement broadly because, again, it's important to get a good perspective on the, on the plan. And then I just want to share a little bit about the timeline. And this is a this is a general timeline. Uh, it's not very specific in what you're seeing, but uh, the first component uh, through the summer, we'll be doing a lot of preliminary research, and that's really getting an idea on the current conditions. So uh, that's the demographics. We'll be starting to do that research. We'll be looking at what's changed, uh, you know, water supply plan, those sorts of things. Uh, so we'll be doing a lot of that in the summer up until uh, roughly mid-August, September sometime, and then we'll develop an interim project report. 
and that interim project report is just designed around what are the what are the findings that that uh, we've we've uncovered and uh, some some basic kind of things to present about uh, where the city's at in terms of current conditions. Uh, and then we'll be moving into the phase where it's the final air report. And that's where you'll see a lot of the uh, the analysis, those later tables where we'll be assessing the comprehensive plan. And we do that on a policy by policy basis. So it's quite extensive as you've probably seen. Uh, and so that final year report will be developing that roughly from around September, October uh, up until uh, January, February. And then in uh, February, January, February, March, we'll hold public meetings uh, and we'll also uh, uh, bring that back to the LPA. And we hope to have it before uh, council uh, by the first week in March. So you can anticipate backing that up for your, uh, for the LPA in terms of review. Throughout that whole process, we're doing ongoing public outreach and en engagement. So uh, that doesn't really stop. Uh, and we're always accepting input, even if we don't have a public meeting. So uh, we want this to be an open process and for uh, residents and all stakeholders to feel like that there's some uh, ability to still have input throughout the whole thing. And then there really, I think that's just it for my presentation. Uh, just we'll entertain any questions and then any feedback and any feedback <laughs> at this point is really geared around, uh, do you have anything uh, fr from your experience using the comprehensive plan? Are there improvements that you, that would help you make decisions uh, and, uh, you know, if there's anything that you can point to us about uh, where we should be looking for additional research, that would be, that would be great. Um, and if you don't have anything now, that's also, that's also acceptable. So I will turn it back over to you. Thank you, uh, doctor, for your presentation. That was excellent. Anybody, Bob? No. No, Don? I don't have anything at this point. Nothing? <clears throat> I think we're good. That was uh, concise and, and uh, just what we needed to hear. Excellent. Very good. Well, I uh, look forward to working with you more and I always enjoy uh, feedback from the LPA because again, you're, you're at the center, you're at the center of, of what's happening with the comprehensive plan. So I really appreciate your, your time and uh, feel free. Our contact information uh, is on the presentation. Uh, and uh, if you have any Anything you're thinking of in the interim, just please let me know. Yes, as always, we thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Uh, we need to review the following land development code amendments for consistency with the City of Bonita Springs Comprehensive Plan. In ordinance of the City of Bonita Springs, Florida, amending the Bonita Springs Land Development Code, Chapter 4, Zoning, Section 4-194, General Submittal Requirements for Applications requ Requiring Public Hearings, Section 4-229, Notices, Section 4-1728, Dimensional Requirements, Delineation of Parking Spaces, and Section 4-2224, Clearing, Grading, or Filling of Land, Providing Conflicts of Law, Severability, codification, scrivener's errors, and modifications that may arise from consideration at public hearing and an effective date. All right, good morning, Jacqueline Genson for the record with Community Development. Just have a few land development code amendments before you today. I am prepared to go through them. They are, they are brief, if, if you like, just for the public edification in your own. Um, what this has to do with the first change is how we provide public notice. Um, and really it's changing the requirements for our mail public notice. Currently right now they are only courtesy and they are done by city staff. And we, by code, we are supposed to do them within 30 days prior to the zoning board hearing. Um, but again, it's a courtesy. And if that doesn't happen, that does not preclude that the case can move forward. So in this change, what we're, what we're doing is um, number five, we're just 
putting more of the burden back on the applicant to give us an affidavit saying they're providing us the correct list. Number six is the surrounding property owners list, and that's the one with the mail notice. So most applications you're required, or we're required to go ahead and mail property owners within 375 feet for most rezoning cases, variances, and special exceptions. With the consumption of alcohol, that's when we increase that distance to 500 feet. But right now, city staff goes ahead and charges applicants $1.50 per mailing label. We prepare the label. Um, we stuff it in the envelope and we mail it out and right now we're looking to go ahead and streamline that and have the applicant go ahead and do that. And we go ahead and explain how they can do that by application in the other section of the code that we amended. So that's the big change with this specific section because notice is in two different sections. And let's go to the next one. <clears throat> okay, so the next section is 4-299, which is where we have notices again. So this is, again, the method for providing notice. And, and what we did is we broke it down into the application type. And so you'll see for um, the plan developments where they require a public hearing if it's a new plan development or if it's an amendment to a plan development. Um, then we have our conventional rezonings. We had the special exceptions. And in those instances, for those specific cases, we are recommending that 30 days prior to the zoning board date that the applicant mail those notifications by certified mail with return receipt. So that way we know that notice was actually provided. The other option we have, or option rather, but the other applications that we have are the special exceptions where we have residential property involved. So we have one, uh, situation where if someone wants to build a huge metal shed on their property it's going to require a special exception it's, it's a very small so you have like your property owners that are going to be doing that that don't really have an access to a lot of resources so in those cases those special exceptions we say you can send by um, regular mail 30 days ahead and then you have your variances which are non-residential or your residential variances that would fall under that same standard so the mail notices could be sent by regular mail and the only thing we would require is an affidavit from the applicant stating that they did go ahead and send those notices so those are the two big changes for the public notification are there any questions or recommendations from the board question okay. traditionally is 375 feet adequate that is the code requirement for today. We are not changing that standard. But most jurisdictions, no, yes. It is. Now, our neighborhood meeting standards, I would say, before we go ahead and accept an application and before it goes to hearing, they actually have a 1,000 feet notification. So you are capturing a wider um, property distance in that instance. You, you mentioned uh, <clears throat> at the beginning of that, that about the 375, that it was 500 feet for, for alcohol consumption, consumption. But it doesn't say that anywhere. It's in the alcohol section, so there's a different section of the code, I believe it's either 4-131, where they'll actually, they have it in the application materials that it's 500 feet. Okay. We can go ahead and add that if the board thinks that's necessary. Okay. It's in a different part of the special exception it is, application. but it would be, I mean, if it's going to be, re it's required and that's the distance. Sure. It might be nice to. Happy to add it's, that. It's important to consolidate all of it. <clears throat> we don't want applicants having to go to 10 different places to, to find things, so it should be consolidated. Okay, thank you. Uh, as far as the content of the notice of uh, the, the uh, change, yes. who's responsible for the content? So the applicant would be responsible for the content, and, and again, we work, we do that already with the neighborhood meeting notices. A lot of the times, the applicants will actually reach out to us for suggested format. But in the actual lane development code today, it tells the applicants and staff what has to be in that notice. So it's the, um, the action that's being requested, it's the time and place of the hearing, it's where can they find the information, um, and where the notice um, will be stored. So it's, it's already in the code uh, requiring um, what the content of that notice is. You're welcome. So basically you're gonna add the alcohol content. Yes, sir. Oh, the distance for the alcohol. Okay. Okay. All right. The next code section that we are recommending some changes on are our parking section. Now, the document that is on the screen is different than what you have in your packet. And the reason is, is we were asked to go ahead and send our changes to um, the city's 
um, American Disabilities Act consultant, so our ADA consultant, and he just provided us his recommended changes on Monday. So, so if you look on this, the screen, I know you guys have them right there. Um, he provided his changes in red, strike through underline, and most of his changes were geared towards the proper terminology of how we identify those spaces. Um, and then the source for which we as the city are to review the location of those spaces. So instead of disabled parking, we are supposed to be calling it accessible parking. Um, and then we look um, to or enforce the compliance with the Florida Accessibility Code for building construction. So that is his recommended change for that section. Uh, the next change that he had was again more so labeling with the correct terminology of disabled spaces to accessible parking spaces. So you'll see that change with the red. The changes in yellow were staff's recommended changes um, with one minor uh, change from staff is um, our city engineer did not like the use of the word bumper stop. So we went ahead and took that out. And so we only have the language here about accessible um, or parking more so should be abutting landscaped areas, sidewalks, structures, property lines, or designed as accessible parking shall be designed with wheel stops or contiguous curbing. So that is the change that staff has made. And then the only other change that the ADA consultant had recommended was just adding some grammatical additional text so the section flowed a little bit better. And those, that's the scope of the changes for the parking. Are there any questions or recommendations for that section? No, ma'am. Okay. And then the last section we had some recommended changes for was our clearing, grading, and filling of land. And this was amended in 2021 as well. Originally, this section was created in 2019. Um, as we work with this code, and one of the last changes we had before, essentially we put in language where if someone unlawfully cleared or added fill to their lot and it wasn't associated with a building permit, it gave neighborhood services the opportunity to go ahead and cite that individual and have them come get a permit through our office. And um, when you look at the current language, it's more geared towards improving a land associated with the building permit. So we went ahead and add language to go ahead and clarify the situations where someone may bring on fill uh, that's not associated with the building permit. Because we too want to make sure that they're not altering drainage patterns or flooding out their neighbor and things like that. So it's very important that that language is very clear and concise. So that is the first language, Oops, sorry, that you will see is that when someone alters the drainage flow on their property that's not associated with the building permit, they need to go ahead and apply for a permit through our limited review development order process. It's a very small permit. It's under $100. Um, so that is staff's recommendation. We are already doing that right now. That is our current process and procedure, but we are making it more clear and concise in the land development code. John, is that your recommendation? And then the other language that we are clarifying is that we came, we came into situations where people were adding on to an existing accessory structure, where it was to a point where staff felt that a drainage plan was required, um, but the code as it reads now was if you're just doing a new accessory structure. So we added that language in. Um, the other language that we added was just <coughs> more consistent and clear language regarding what does other impervious areas include. Um, the current definitions or listings underneath that title um, pose some questions by the public, so we went ahead and clarified that language in terms of what we meant by impervious areas that don't absorb water, you know, is it structures, driveways, sidewalks, so just more clarification on what that means. Then we also went ahead and added a standard to give staff flexibility to where if you have a large lot and someone's adding something so small and it might trigger the requirement for a drainage plan, but when you logically look at it, does it really need a drainage plan? So we wanted to be able to give staff the ability to waive the requirement because in some instances it's 
we can look at a property and say it, it's not really required. So we wanted to go ahead and give staff that flexibility in the code. So that helps the, the homeowners out <coughs> for costs and things like that. And uh, that's really the scope of the changes for those. So if there's any questions regarding what we're proposing, we're happy to answer. It looks like you guys did your due diligence. It looks good. Anybody have any questions? Uh, here. <clears throat> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Deb, are we going to talk about the, the July meeting or our next meeting? We do have some other land devel development code changes that might be coming up, but I know in the summer everyone takes some vacation, but we're going to have some uh, home-based business regulations coming forward. I think we might have pickleball coming forward. So we just wanted to kind of did see. You, did you say pickleball? We did say I'm pickleball. very excited. Everybody's talking about this pickleball. <laughs> they changed one of my tennis courts in my Ball HOA way. to pickleball. So I'm excited to hear that. Thank you. Good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care if I'm excited. That's all right. When is That's the next? Great. When is the next meeting, Deb? Um, Deb, do you play pickleball while you're looking for that meeting? No, I you don't. should. You should really should. I Exercise might take it up. Important. I was thinking about it. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to invite her. I'm going to invite Deb over to play some pickleball. Thank you. <laughs> it's very popular, but not everyone loves pickleball. You, there are some noise concerns that have been brought to the council and staff's attention, and we're looking to go ahead and evaluate those. You know who would be good at pickleball? Bob. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Please don't get off course here, Deb. Get some sugar in the morning. That's yeah. What the donuts. So, so the meetings are pretty much, I mean, typically we, we do like to do them um, the second Thursday of the month. But, we, I mean, this meeting didn't happen the second Thursday of the month. So we are flexible um, with, with the meeting date. Um, but, again, I know in July sometimes people are traveling. So wanted to, while we have you all here, just wanted to see what. I think we're pretty flexible. I'm not here July. You, you're going to be gone. July 1st. Bob, are you good? Ten days in July I'll be away. I think the 16th on. Okay. So then the clerk will go ahead. We'll go ahead and so, vet yeah, some. It will be July 14th, the second Thursday. Well, what, when is it? It will be July 14th. Why don't, why don't we circulate dates because it's not just, everyone doesn't have their yeah. calendars in front of them and there was two members not here, so. Yeah, and I'd like to welcome, uh, before we adjourn, there's two things I want to do. Welcome new member Steve Lohan, who couldn't be here today. He's waited and waited and waited for a meeting, but he does his annual trip, and I told him go ahead and go because this was before we got notified. But he's, he's sorry he couldn't be here. We never get to speak, although I get, do get to speak to Bob occasionally. I see him at events. Anybody have anything they'd like to say before we, we go? Because we never talk, like ever. Please, sir. I brought this up, uh, I don't know, last meeting or meeting before, that we need to do something to recognize the service of Rex Sense. Yes, I will. Who was, yes. Who was, one yeah. of the, who was one of the, was the last founding member of the LPA. May he rest in peace. I believe he was recognized. So we need, to, we need something, it whether it's a plaque or whatever. <clears throat> um, we need to get him here. Can't remember the date. Yeah, that's what I was told, or I was going to buy the guy a plaque myself and put it up here because he needs to be, he needs to be recognized. Because I'm next in line, so when I go, I want something. Oh, you're getting something. <laughs> yeah, if I'm up here, <clears throat> you're getting something. So, so they did recognize him at a council meeting? Did but they? But if you all would like to do something as well, we can do that. We would like to. That, yeah. that would be appropriate. Yeah, take care of that. I will. He's still alive. He is? He oh, is yes. still here. Oh, Very, still much so. Very much so. Very much so. Yes. I want him to rest while he's not working. May he rest peacefully. It didn't sound working. like that, Jeff. No, I apologize, <laughs> Bob. I, I <laughs> Rex is saying you start I'm in the fun. ground Just, already? No, don't say that. That's terrible, Bob. I would never say that. <laughs> I saw him yesterday morning. He's doing very well. Okay, good. good. All right, uh, so that's we need to make an approval of the minutes. We can do that. So I put them. December 9th, 2021. I'd like to make yes. a motion to approve the minutes. Any second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we're going to adjourn. Thank you, everybody, for your time and coming.